Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd do something slightly different and do a top 10 list of my current favourite artists. This will be a quick fire top 10 list so for any more information look down in the description below and I'll list some sources that you can click on and find out more information for yourself. Okay so taking the 10th place is an artist called Chaiharu Shayota and hopefully I'm getting that pronunciation correct. She's a Japanese artist who does a lot of installation performance based artwork and a lot of her work is to do with suspending kind of objects within string. It's very emotionally driven. I've got a few books on her work in the studio and she is a really interesting artist and definitely one to research for yourself and find out more information on. And number ninth place is Ai Weiwei, who is a Chinese artist. A lot of his work is very political driven. A lot of it has to do with kind of his home country and the way China operates and kind of the lack of freedom people have in China and the kind of oppression and stuff like that. I have seen two of his installations in real life. I saw the kind of sunflower seed one at the Tate in London, which is really good. And I was there when you were actually allowed to walk on top of it, but then they closed it shortly after because it was releasing loads of dust into the air. So it's kind of a health hazard, so they had to stop people walking on it. But fortunately, I was there so I could lie in it and walk on it and stuff. And it was a really interesting exhibition. I also saw his work at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park um, in an old chapel, and it had like this big kind of iron metal tree outside and these chairs. Um, laid out in a form and stuff and if you do know a lot about his work it is about his home country and politics and stuff like that and again I'll link his website below so you can search for yourself because it's kind of really hard to explain in such a short video. Taking eighth place is Damien Hirst, a British artist. He actually won the Turner Prize in 1995. According to an article back in 2010, he was the richest living artist in the UK. And you'll probably be fairly familiar with his work, his sharks in formaldehyde, his spin paintings, um, all the other kind of stuff he does around death and life. And I do take quite a lot of inspiration from Damien Hirst's work within my own practice. And the reason he ranks quite low on the list is because I watched the doc... I watched a documentary on Channel 4 and it was him doing a walkabout of his new exhibition and it really, really irritated us the fact that there was a brief moment in the kind of documentary where he couldn't figure out which paintings that he had made and which of his paintings pe other people had made for him and that just really irritated us. So that's the reason he ranks at number 8. And taking seventh place is the British painter Jenny Savile. If you don't know who Jenny Savile is, she creates these ginormous, really huge, naked, fleshy paintings of people. And they're often quite larger people too. I probably won't be able to show any images because they're all quite naked and quite graphic. Um, but they're really stunning paintings. She's a very, very good painter. And she actually beat her record in 2016 for the highest painting she'd ever sold at auction. And she sold a piece for £6.8 million when it was estimated to sell for £2 million. So, well done, Jenny. <laughs> but yeah, she's very, very good. Really great. I'll um, obviously link some stuff down below for her as well. And in sixth place, we have Keith Harron. And he's a great artist. I abs absolutely love his work. He's very well known for pop art, graffiti, his colourful little stickmen figures, painting, and I think I think he did sculpture as well. But I really love his work. It's very simplistic, yet very sophisticated, and it still has quite an emotional pull on you, even though it is so simple. Unfortunately, he did die in 1990 um, due to AIDS and HIV. But I can imagine if he was still here today, he would have produced some amazing stuff. Like, oh, it's kind of really sad to think that someone died so young and it, and so early in his career because what he could have produced and what could have happened 
I can imagine it would have just been amazing. He'd have probably been number one on my list if he was still around. Um, just a fantastic artist. I would have loved, absolutely loved, if he was still around to have sat down, just had a cup of tea and a chat with him. I can imagine he's got some amazing stories. But yeah, so he's in sixth place. In fifth place is Anthony Gormley. He's a British sculptor and he's well known for the Angel of the North. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it above and below. I actually had a fantastic opportunity to see his studio based in Hexham. And that was really interesting. He does have a huge team of people working for him. So I didn't get a chance to see him working or actually meet him. But yeah, a really great artist. Absolutely love his work. And taking the fourth spot on the list is Rachel Whiteread. She's a British artist, very famous for her resin casts of negative spaces. And she's one of the reasons why I got into a lot of the resin work that I do. She really, really inspired me to go towards that material. She was actually the first woman to ever win the Turner Prize back in 1993, which is fantastic. And I saw her exhibition, her drawn exhibition, funnily enough, in London. But I did get a chance to see some of her sculptures and some of her other kind of little things with the exhibition. It was really interesting. And seeing her drawings, you could kind of see where sculptures came from and where installations came from and stuff. It's really, really interesting to see. But yeah, she's really inspiring. That's why she takes the fourth spot. Absolutely love her work. Taking third place is Juan Menoz, and he's a Spanish sculptor. And he's been an absolutely massive inspiration for my practice and mainly the way I present my work. So he does a lot of kind of sculptures that are very dependent on space. The space the sculptures inhabit are just as important as the sculptures themselves. Really, really interesting, really interesting way of thinking. And yeah, he's been a massive inspiration for a lot of the work that I've done, especially recently as well, and kind of made me think about the space and the context a lot more than I originally had done. So that's why he takes the third spot. Taking the second place on this list is the Japanese artist Yayoi Kasama. Hopefully I've pronounced that right as well. And she's very famous for the metal pumpkins with colored polka dots on. But the piece of work that I find the most interesting is her obliteration room. I think that's what it was called. And it was basically a blank white kind of room setting, a living room kind of setting, and the public were invited to obviously experience the work, but to put these coloured polka dot stickers all around and kind of destroy the white and disrupt it. And it's a really interesting idea and very interactive. But you will probably be quite familiar with her work. She seems to be just getting higher and higher and more popular and more popular. Um, but yeah, taking the second place, fantastic work. Absolutely love her. She's the type of person I would love to sit down and have a chat with. I can imagine she's got a million, million, million stories. She's amazing. So yeah. And before we get onto the top spot, here are some honourable mentions. taken the top spot on this list is Anish Kapoor, the British sculptor, who's actually originally from Bombay. He won the Turner Prize in 1991, and he's most well known for his very colourful, pigmented, dusty kind of work, as well as his interactive, shiny, ultra shiny, chrome looking sculptures. Um, he's got the big bean sculpture. It's not called the bean, but everyone refers to it as the bean in Chicago. And it's something I would absolutely love to see. I have seen his work twice in person. I've been to uh, see it at one of the galleries at the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. He had an exhibition called Flash Forward. And that was really, really interesting. He had some of the pigmented work, the metal shiny works. Um, it's just really great, really great to see it in person. And I also saw one of his giant, it was absolutely massive, this huge black sculpture 
in the Maxi Museum in Rome, and that was really amazing to see in person. However, if he does keep trademarking colours, because he trademarked the black is black, or copyrighted it or whatever, so no one else can use it, if he keeps doing that, he won't be on my list, because I think colours are there for everyone. I don't think you should be able to trademark them, copyright them, or keep them as your own. So that really pissed us off. But other than that, I absolutely love his work. And that does it for my top 10 list of top 10 artists of who I love right now. It was really hard to make because there are tons and tons of other artists that I absolutely love as well. Let me know in the comments below what your favourite artist is. Were any of your favourites in my list? And make sure to subscribe to the channel, it helps out a lot. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye!